All right. I hope everyone's doing well today and had a good spring break. Um, had a pretty uh, uneventful weekend. So um, we did not have live class session on uh, Friday. Um, I ended up having to go to the uh, school and take care of stuff. Um, most people are, or that was Wednesday actually, sorry, not Friday. Um, um, yeah, so anyways, uh, let's see here. If you have questions, um, you can post them in the chat. Um, uh, let's see here, get that window open. All right, all right, good to hear that you had a pretty good uh, weekend. I saw lots of people riding four-wheelers around. That was pretty interesting. Um, let's see here, got the recording going. Yes, all right, so um, I guess we'll take a peek uh, at the at, at Moodle here. Um, let me share my screen. Okay, here we go. Um, let's see here. All right, we are on Monday. It's kind of difficult to get to some of the stuff. Okay, so here we go. We are on. I'll switch it to the student view so it kind of looks like what your guys' um, screens look like. So let's see here. Okay. One second. All right. We want to see it as a student. Okay. All right. So when you scroll down, um, you should get to Monday. Uh, April 6th, NTI day number 17. Um, I put the three chapters in there and you can always use the link to YouTube if you want to listen to those. There's the week four check-in um, forum. Make sure you post in that. I think most of you probably already have. And we have the live class meeting uh, link. And for the readings today, ooh, lot, lots of stuff going on. Um, yeah, check my notes on the dates we had one long chapter and two shorter ones and we started on tuesday no it was uh monday november 20th i don't know why i wrote yeah monday november 20th um so monday uh the science group meets at paul's house and eric is mean to some of paul's friends um you know he's he's saying Things like uh, they finally let the kids uh, out of the fields to, you know, from working. And it's really kind of inappropriate to say. Um, so Tino confronts uh, Eric and taunts him. And Eric punches Tino. And Paul references, uh, starts referencing a memory. But Paul's like really frightened of Eric and, and seeing him do this. Now you have to remember that Eric is a lot older than um, Paul and his friends. So it was completely inappropriate. Um, what he did to Tino and um, again Paul wonders uh, he, he sees uh, someone in the window and he thinks his dad saw Eric do it and his dad didn't say anything um, so um, Paul wonders uh, if his dad uh, you know had done that and um, Eric tells Arthur he doesn't need um, a blackjack so there's a reference in, in, this, in this chapter where Arthur reaches into his gym bag and goes to grab something, and it doesn't really say what it is, but Paul thinks it's a blackjack. And a blackjack is like a, it's a little, well, it's, it's like a little club about yay long, and it's filled with lead. It's like, you know, like a billy club. And uh, Arthur, or Eric tells Arthur, he says, I don't think we'll be needing that today. And then he gets into the, um, uh, scuffle with uh, Eric. So let me go back out of the screen sharing in case questions come up and I, so I can see them. Um, let's see here. Let's see. Where is, oh, there's my screen. Um, let's try this. Okay, back in the chat. Okay. Good. Looks good. All right. Um, so that takes us to um, Tuesday, November 21st. Uh, Paul eats breakfast um, with his dad, and he wants to ask his dad 
if he saw what Eric did, but he doesn't actually say anything. He actually keeps it to himself. Um, he goes on the errands with his mom and learns that Eric has a key to the storage, um, their storage locker. And Paul's mom has a lot, uh, or has to go and meet at the school with the guidance counselors about Eric. And she doesn't really say why, but then afterwards um, she tells Paul that it's um, basically uh, about Eric's grades, how they've been slipping and um, with him playing football. And the counselors seem to think that it's all, the fame and everything from him doing really well in football is the reason why his grades are going down. And Paul tells his mom, he's like, well, I'm an athlete and my grades didn't slip. So, you know, it's not really, it's not really true that, you know, athletes grades slip during season because, you know, his didn't. So, um, so that's, um, let's see here. Um, so that's the next chapter. Then, uh, while, while his mom is in the um, uh, school, um, Paul goes to the football field, and Eric and his friends and the football team are out there, and they're practicing, and it's just breaking up. And he notices the green Ford pull into the parking lot, and it's Lewis. And Lewis is Tino's, uh, I believe it's his older brother. Um, and uh, Lewis, you know, goes up and asks one of the other players who Eric is. And he calls out saying, you know, I don't, which one of you is uh, Eric Fisher? Um, you know, I heard you like to hit little kids. How would you like to come and try smacking me? And Eric, it shows in this chapter that he's truly a coward. Because he won't, he, won't, he won't stand up to Lewis. He won't even tell him that it's him. And uh, Arthur sneaks up um, kind of um, on uh, Lewis. And he grabs that blackjack out of the, his duffel bag. And he hits Lewis across the head with it. And then you keep right on walking. And Eric, um, Eric is quoted as saying, oh, I'm going to find that spot in the novel. Um, let's see here. Um, give me one second. I should have marked that. Um, yep. Okay, there it is. And... Yep. Okay. Eric says to him when he's walking by, um, Arthur takes care of all my light work. So it's almost like he thinks he's almost like a mob boss or something. And he's got these people to, um, you know, uh, jump in when there's any type of, uh, of an issue. But it, it shows the cowardice of um, Eric. And Paul is left, uh, you know, really kind of freaked out about this. And Lewis ends up driving off in the sport and they, and they leave. And uh, Paul ends the chapter by saying that, you know, even though football season um, was going to be over, it's never o over in the, um, in the uh, Fisher household. And that takes us to Thursday, November 23rd. Um, let me get to that spot here. Um, Thursday, November 23rd, which is Thanksgiving. Uh, wait a minute here. Am I getting ahead of myself? I think I am. Was that? Oh, we had for me. We had November twentieth, one. We had twenty first, two. Nope, and we had Thursday, November twenty third. Um, let's see here. Why am I feeling like? Oh yeah, yeah. Okay, that's the big freeze. Um, so, well, um, with this chapter, it's uh, Thanksgiving and it's really cold. Uh, Paul's talking to his grandmother and grandpa who are actually going to stop by um, in a couple of weeks on their way to uh, Disney World and uh, see the house. And uh, Paul's dad makes a reference saying, well, it would be nice if they came and watched one of Eric's uh, football games. Doesn't really mention anything um, about, Paul, about Paul and his sports, um, but the grandparents aren't really, they don't buy into the whole Eric um, uh, football dream thing. Uh, they really don't seem to care. Um, because it's cold in Florida, uh, when Paul goes to school, um, he notices that a lot of the kids that live on orchards and have groves are not in school. So there's a lot of students absent. And they, um, oh, hold on, I gotta admit someone here. And so, um, so they uh, realize that there's not um, all these kids in school, and they're talking about um, how those kids are having to fight the freeze. and Paul says it's kind of like a snow day, but um, 
Um, I'm trying to catch up and find my spot in the book here so I don't get out of order. Yeah, it's like a snow day. Um, they are fighting the freezes. So they're trying to protect the trees um, from getting, you know, hit with the frost. And it's getting, in Florida, that's, you know, it's kind of strange for it to get that cold, um, but it does happen in the, in the northern areas like in Tangerine where they're at. So he decides to, um, let's see, he goes to, let me find Henry. And um, Henry's the one that tells him where the kids are at. Or, and uh, he ends up uh, telling them that they can, um, uh, maybe his brother can give him a ride over to um, Tino's and so that they can help him fight the, uh, fight the, fight the freeze. And so uh, after school, Paul does go to the, um, to the, uh, um, what is it? The uh, roses, roses, um, Anyways, he go, they go over to the orchard and they help. Uh, the Thomas Cruz Grove, that's what I'm trying to think of. Um, <clears throat> when, they, when they get there, they meet Lewis. Uh, he wondered why Paul wanted to help. It was difficult for Paul to explain. He just referred to the fact that they were war eagles. Um, Tino was Paul's crew leader. He was all business. He said that crew members should take care of any business before they start, not after they start, uh, meaning they, they're going to be out in the fields for a while. Um, Paul went into the, uh, the Kianza hut to call his mom. He found uh, that the inside was completely filled with um, a lot of the saplings and small trees, and most of what had been in there was gone um, from his last visit. It was filled with just all kinds of baby trees. Um, on the phone, uh, Paul's mom said that the manager at the store bin let her in to the shed because she had previously locked her key in it. Paul could not fathom where she was coming from, Questioning Paul about the sudden uh, plan, um, mom, his mom tells him that she trusts people until they give her a reason not to do so. That's, so that was kind of a strange part. Well, he, Paul's like, why is she, she telling me this? Um, so the conversation ended with a conveyed message from dad to be home in time for Eric's game in the morning. Uh, Lewis's plan for the night was three-pronged. They would ice the grove, uh, pack the golden dawns, and put smudge pots in the old grove. Paul mentally compared how the orange growers were facing the freeze uh, with how his family and neighbors were facing it. So, so his family, um, you know, they were just back in Lake Windsor down and they, were, they weren't really thinking too much about it. They were just complaining about the muck fires and the termites and whatnot. Um, the battle to save the orange trees went on for 12 hours. The temperature went down to 24 degrees by Around two o'clock, the work was halted for a short time and the decision was made that everyone except Tino's father and uncle would go inside the, can uh, the, the Kansai High. Paul did what he hadn't done while working. Um, he, uh, he collapses. Teresa gave him some coffee with cream and sugar. Shortly after, he felt better. Then the good news came that the temperatures were starting to climb. When the other workers started to return to the growth, Paul started to go with them. But Tino told Teresa that Lewis didn't want Paul to return. Then Lewis entered um, while he had a chance. Paul told Lewis that he saw what happened. He saw Arthur hit him. The conversation ended with Teresa, uh, or when Teresa came, uh, got closer. Paul slept until those working uh, returned at daybreak. When Tino thanked him for his help, he apologized for the incident at home. He told Tino that he wanted to be friends. Tino realistically said that they, that they could be friends at the Groves. Um, after mentioning that there would be uh, take out for breakfast. Tino told Paul that Lewis wanted to see him. Lewis told Paul the Golden Dawns had survived. Then the conversation then the conversation turned to the incident with Arthur and the Blackjack. Lewis predicted that on Monday around three o'clock, Eric and Arthur would have different attitudes. Lewis's uncle interrupted the conversation. When mom arrived, uh, when, when Paul's mom arrived, um, Paul told her that he was getting sick. Uh, she said that he should go home. Um, to bed instead of going to Eric's game. Then she realized that Paul missing such an important um, event would not sit well with, um, with, her, with his dad. As soon as Paul writes down all this important stuff, he uh, does go to sleep. And that's pretty much the end of the chapter. Um, let's see. And he, he starts the chapter off um, with a review of what happened yesterday. Um, it says on that, on that day, mom said she trusts people until she has uh, 
has a reason not to trust them later, who, um, that might be significant later. Um, so when you, when, you, when you read things like that, you want to make note of it. So that uh, covers up to Friday, November 24th, and that's the reading for tomorrow. So that is the recap of these chapters. And the last chapter was uh, definitely a longer chapter. A lot happened in there. Um, it, you can see that Eric is really, really, um, you know, kind of getting out of control. And um, we're going we're gonna to continue to follow that with the, with the next chapters. Hopefully, uh, th these chapters are interesting to you guys. And um, I think these last three chapters are pretty interesting. A lot of stuff happening in, in there with, with uh, two fights and um, the freeze threatening the orange trees and all that. So uh, we will find out tomorrow um, the next, uh, what happens in the next chapter. Um, are there any questions? Does anyone have any questions? If you do, you can type them in the chat or um, let me make sure my volume's on. Let's see here. Okay, yeah, my volume's on. Um, okay, um, well, if there are not any questions, um, I have to get ready for my two o'clock meeting. Um, oh, Serenity's just joining us, so. Um, we went up in this recording. If you're just joining, we uh, summarized the chapters. I'll uh, um, uh, put the recording up on Moodle in case you miss parts of it. You can uh, go back and review it, review it. And um, I guess if there are not any questions, we will uh, wrap up this session. And remember, if you did miss uh, part of the part of the live class, you can go back and watch the recording. I'll have the recording probably up for probably within a half an hour, it should be up on Moodle. So um, yeah, I know there were people here today. I'm, I'm happy. I actually forgot to send out a remind to everyone as well. So uh, maybe we'll have more people tomorrow. Um, I'll uh, listen in the meeting um, for any new uh, news. I, I, let, I believe they're gonna, they're setting due dates for the first round of NTI work, and I think we can start entering grades in um, Wednesday. Um, so probably by Friday, um, I'll have grades in for a good portion. And I think um, I, had a, I had someone email asking um, if they could drop stuff off. Um, you can drop stuff off at the school um, at any time. I, I guess they have boxes set up where you just put the stuff in a box. Um, but I asked Dr. Kirby today when students could drop stuff off, and he said anytime. So that'll help if uh, if you need to drop anything off. Um, if you're doing everything online, there really shouldn't be anything to drop off. Um, once I get, I think I, I go in tomorrow, so we might eat. We might not have a live session tomorrow. It depends. I think I can get up to the school and back before um, our one thirty session. So. Um, I'll see how much um, work has been turned in, and that'll kind of gauge how long it's going to take me to grade it all. If there's like a you know a stack four feet high, then it's going to take me a few days to get through that. So, um, okay. Um, are there any questions? Any last minute questions? Okay. Well, um, if you need anything, post in the forums. Message me through Moodle. Um, you can contact me through Remind. Um, make sure you do the check-in discussion um, this week. It's going to be due um, uh, Friday by probably around noon. I have to have time to put the numbers into um, Dr. Kirby. And um, what do you think? What else is there? And I think that's about it. So if there are no questions or if you think of something later, just uh, shoot me an email, text, uh, post in the forum. And... Um, that will conclude today's uh, session. So, all right guys, have a good day.